Hello, and welcome to part one of my Let's Play on Final Fantasy VII for the Sony PlayStation. I do plan on playing this game in its entirety, which can take anywhere from 20 to 70 hours. Each one of these videos will be about an hour in length, but some might be longer or shorter. The release schedule for these videos is really whenever I get them done, because unlike other Let's Plays on my YouTube channel this time, I'm choosing to record the commentary after I play the game, not while. Reason is, I really wanted to filter what's being said and make it as interesting as possible. So as far as commentary goes, I'll explain the story, give you some interesting facts, and my personal experiences. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy Final Fantasy VII. So this game was released September 7th, 1997 by Squaresoft, making me about nine years old at the time. I had never played a Final Fantasy game before this, and honestly, I can't tell you how I had even known about the game, but I'm assuming it had to have been either from television commercials or magazine ads, because apparently at the time, Sony issued a $100 million ad campaign for this game, which is crazy. But after I did hear about the game, I was so hyped for it to come out. I had to have everything Final Fantasy VII. I still can remember looking in the back of a magazine and seeing those Final Fantasy VII Extra Night action figures advertised and asking my parents to get them for me that Christmas. This is Aerith Gainsborough. She's a 22-year-old flower girl from the slums of Midgar. I really don't know what she's supposed to be doing in this back alley. Some people say she might have been praying. I really don't know. And actually, I didn't question it until this playthrough. I really like the look and the feel, the atmosphere they set up here. Like, you can really feel like how dark, down, and depressing the city of Midgar really is. So to give you a little information on what's about to happen, we're going to meet Cloud Strife, the main protagonist, who's working as a mercenary for hire, helping an eco-terrorist group called Avalanche, and they're going to destroy the Mako reactors that's surrounding the city of Midgar. Awesome transition from cutscene to gameplay. Here we see Biggs, Jesse, Wedge, and Barrett. And finally, Cloud jumps like a baller off the top of the train. Then the game's finally going to give me control, and we're going to get into this. So this is kind of how combat works in Final Fantasy VII. This is definitely not the last time you're going to see it, but um, yeah. So it's called the Active Time Battle, and it's been this way since I think Final Fantasy IV. But um, basically, you just take turns hitting your opponent. It's their strategy somewhat. Not so much in the beginning of the game as there is later in the game, but they do their poses, then you get your experience, your money, which is called Gil, that you use to buy like your materia, and your equipment, and all that other stuff. Uh, this is when they finally let you actually create your name, and I was kind of lost here. I kept hitting default, and then I realized you gotta hit select, so I was like, okay. That's why there's that weird me going around. And then you get to pick Barrett, and now I realize you hit select instead of not default, which I don't know why I thought it was default. It was weird. But here's another transition between game and cinematic again, which is they do that a lot in this game. And I think it really, it's, it adds a certain flavor to the game, I guess. 
I definitely had never seen it in a game before this. I was trying really hard to make that door without getting into a battle. But, um... As for the battles, like, you can equip different, um, materia, which is, like, you equip them to the weapons and your different, like, accessories, which I'll probably get into later as the playthroughs go on, because, let's face it, there's probably going to be about 70 episodes of this, so I don't want to talk about it all right off the bat, but you you equip certain materia, which gives you your spells, and since you can equip whatever materia to any person there's really no difference between who's in your party and who isn't, which is kind of different because it was never really like that in other Final Fantasy games. So, but I mean, it kind of lends you to if you wanted to play with somebody and you couldn't play with them because in other Final Fantasies, they were just the healer and you didn't need the healer or they were a warrior and you needed a healer. Now you don't have to deal with that because you can just play with, with whoever you wanted. We have Barrett yelling at us again, just... Now he's, he joins you, and now Barrett's in your party, which, Barrett's pretty cool. Funny thing, like, I didn't know Jesse was actually a girl until I looked it up recently, because, like, from the model that they use, it could be a girl or a guy. But then when I go back and, like, I just, most of the time I just always skip the cutscenes, so... Uh, or even like the talking scenes so like I never really read all the stuff that she said but now I'm like you know I guess it would be kind of weird if the dude was saying all oh, that's a cloud but yeah and another thing like I was trying to, like, I was reading the text as I was playing the game because I hadn't played this game in a while, so I figured if I'm going to play it, why not record it so then, you know, other people can see me play it. So, like, you can still kind of read the text along with me. So you can understand the game like I'm playing it. So that's why, like, I'll recap it, like I was saying before, like, later on. So then, like, if you're not reading this and you're just watching me play it, then you'll still know what's happening. Another thing that was weird, like I hadn't played this in so long. I like I think X or O is to run. I can't remember, but one of them, like I kept switching them, so like you'll see me like kind of stutter like after the it stops and it starts, and that's just because I couldn't remember which button was run, so I would just be holding the wrong button and he'd be walking, and it was just it was extremely irritating. But by the end of this, I kind of started getting it, so you shouldn't see it anymore after this playthrough. Another thing, like this game, it's like it uses all pre rendered backgrounds, like Resident Evil. So the directions that you use to move around in are kind of weird sometimes. And it, it's really hard to explain unless you've actually played the game. But if you haven't played the game, I don't know why you wouldn't. This game is totally awesome. It's, it's a pretty awesome game, and I can't really tell if it's just all nostalgia or not, but I played this game so many times over. It's really awesome. So down here, I'm going to save the game, but I'm also doing, it's going to look weird because I save the game, but then like it, it, it freezes. I'll show it to you. And there's a reason for this actually. Like here I messed up. I meant to go down to save and it went up to items, but so you'll see here that I have slot one has 9 billion gold or whatever the hell it is. And I figured if I was going to do this, 
I want to cut back in as much grinding as possible. So here I reset the game, which is why it freezes and there's this weird jitter thing. But yeah, and I, and I reloaded it. So now I have the 9,999 gold. So I want to cut back on as much grinding as possible. But I'm pretty sure I'm still going to have to grind levels, even when you guys aren't watching me play it. Which, I mean, isn't necessarily a bad thing. I I don't really mind grinding in RPGs. I don't really mind grinding in any video game, actually. By the end of the second, I almost guarantee if you actually watch, I doubt you're going to watch 70 episodes of me play this, but if you did, you're going to be tired of hearing that noise that it does every time it goes into battle. So this boss is called the Guard Scorpion, and um, it's the first boss in the game. And it's not very hard, and I don't think I could die on this boss if I tried. But um, this brings me right into the limit breaks that the characters get. So when you take so much damage, you have the little limit bar that's flashing right now, rainbow colors. And it, it kind of sends the character into like this mega overdrive and does more damage to the enemy. And throughout the game, you can accumulate, I think, about seven limit breaks for each character. Some characters only get a few. I think like Kate Sith only gets, I think, two of them. But the very last one of most of the characters is really awesome and does tons of damage. So here, Barrett is warning me not to attack this thing while its tail is up, but I'm just, I'm completely ignoring it, so I'm gonna attack them. I don't know why I did this, but I did, so like, you're gonna see what happens. Like, you can die here if you're not careful, because like, this thing does like, tons of damage on you. But like an idiot, I'm still attacking it, and I realized, oh shit, it told me not to attack this guy, and I'm still doing it. But on the other side, it is a really fast way to get your limit breaks. Oh yeah, um, Barrett's full name is actually Barrett Wallace. I, I just figured I'd throw that in there. So now, um, if you haven't read anything that's been going on, they set the bomb down and they've got a certain amount of time to escape, 10 minutes to get out of here, which is plenty enough time. Like, they could have given you five minutes and you'd still be able to make it out of this reactor.
But um, there is actually a part when it comes up after like, it's up this ladder. Like if you don't get Jesse, like I'll show you where it is. If you don't get her, like you can't get out of the reactor. And the first time I played this game, I did this and I died in the reactor. So um, yeah, there's a lot of fucking battles, damn. But um, it's really not a bad thing. Like it is for when you're trying to watch it. But when you're playing the game, it's not that bad because you need to level up in order to get stronger to defeat the enemies faster, which I you'll see like as I play, like sometimes like I'll purposely fight the enemies because I know in the end I'm gonna have to do it anyway. So yeah, you know, it gives you the full experience of what it would be like to play this game, even though if it's not that interesting to watch. there it was again like how I slowly nudged but then I had to hold circle I think to run like you see Jesse's stuck like in the bottom left corner right now and like you can totally run past her and not notice her but if you don't get her then well let's just say like you'll, you'll see it up here like she won't help you get out of the the reactor and nobody can get the decipher code and then there's just no way it's it's bad so I guess maybe that's why they gave you so much time in case like you got all the way up here and you're like shit where the hell do I go Yeah, when, when I ran back, ran forward. That was because when you ran through the door, like you were holding one direction, but then when you ran back, it was you ran the opposite direction. It was the control schemes again. See, so when you run in here, if you miss Jesse, nobody opens the door and you have to go back. But since I got Jesse, we don't have to worry about that. See, I still made it under the reactor in under five minutes, so he still could have made it. Here's a, another case of them using movie backgrounds with the game. It's totally awesome. It just blew my mind back when that really hit when that first happened. Like I was just like, that's so awesome how it, like it does that. It's that smooth transition between the two. I mean, I, I don't think the game, like it, the look of it, like the backgrounds are still pretty good, but the character models, uh, they're kind of garbage now. And I think they could have been better. Like not back then, now. I mean, I, I wish they'd remake it but I really don't think Square will ever do it. And honestly, I think if they did, they'd probably just mess it up. There's a wedge. Yeah, so basically what they're telling you to do is Cloud's like, I'm not sure if he was really going to ask him for his money or not, but Barrett just assumed he wanted his money right then and there, but I mean like, Come on, Cloud. Do you really need the cash money right after you just jumped out of a burning explosive? But right now, like, they all split up, and they're going to rendezvous at, like, I think they said Sector 8 or something like that. And now, here's when you meet Aerith again, and there's two different things you can do with her here. Like, you can just, you can tell her one option, which is, um, the nothing, I mean, you better get out of here, which she just walks off screen. But if you do the other option, you can actually buy a flower from her, which I'm not really sure like what the point of it is other than just buying a flower from Aerith. But um, I know you can give it to Tifa and Marlene, which you'll meet later on. I don't know if they actually affect anything story-wise. I could have looked it up, but I didn't. I 
and most of the time I just run straight through this, but this time I figured I'm, I'd stop and talk to this guy for some weird reason. I don't know why. It just felt like it. And I guess because I've never done it, and since people were watching, maybe they're wondering what do these people do on the sides. I've never talked to everybody on there. But um, this is the same case, like you can say later or fight them. I chose to fight them because once again, I'm going to need the experience to keep playing the game, to not be stuck and grinding, <laughs> at least not on camera anyway. I don't want that to happen because I want to save you guys from watching me grind in this game as much as possible because nobody wants to watch that. But, I mean, as you can see, like, it doesn't doesn't take too long. The cloud kills him in one hit, so it's not that bad. But once again, like, if, if you were playing the game, you would want to fight these people because you have to level up in order to beat it, like I've said countless times now, but... Like, the fighting mechanic, it's not so bad to do as it is to watch. Like, it is slight boring to watch me fight. I mean, maybe as, like, time goes on and the enemies get tougher and, like, there's more strategy besides me just mashing the O button, attack, attack, attack. And I can't remember if it's O or X. Sorry about that. Another case of them blending FMV versus the game itself. Look at that character model. Like, this is the worst Final Fantasy looking on the PlayStation 1, though. I mean, like, the character models outside the battle are really bad looking, as you can tell. Like, they're, like, blocky and... I, I don't even, sometimes they barely resemble what they're supposed to be. Like, all their hands are, like, square, as you can see, like, Barrett's hands. Like, I just don't know why. Like, why would they do it like that? But I guess, like, the technology was really new back then. Because before this game came out, Square did a, um, a, a tech demo. It was called FF, I think it was... Uh, CGI or something like that. I can't remember the exact word for it. But, um... It featured three characters from Final Fantasy VI and they were basically testing it. It was, like, it was just basically a tech, a tech demo just to, like, show the public what they could do. And... It, it was... I, I think the models looked worse than they do now, but... You know, I mean... Uh, you have to start somewhere, which is probably why they look so bad in this game. It, oh, it was SGI, which stood for Silicon Graphics Inc. That's what the um, Square's tech demo was originally called. like this part right here um jesse wipes the the dirt off cloud's face like it it never really struck me that it could have been a girl like it, it could look like a dude i just i don't know maybe i'm not maybe i'm the only person in the whole world that thought that i get stuck here i can't figure out how to go through the door 
it's not working. I don't know why. Like, most of the time you just push forward on it, and then it just randomly works. Cloud doesn't even have a nose or a mouth. He's just eyes. What's happening? Cloud obviously jumped in. They were all, like, sad and depressed that he didn't make it to the train on time because the train was rolling. And then, you know, he comes in. They're all like, yay, Cloud, you're here. This part is where Jesse explains to you about, well, they use it to explain, like, to show you the layout of the city, but they're kind of like, okay, this is where we're going to bomb next, but this is basically showing you the layout of the city. So I'm not sure if I brought it up or not, but sh the Shinra Company is the giant tall building thing in the center, and it controls Midgar. And um, the Mako reactors... Mako is kind of like the life force of the planet, and the reactors are draining it from it. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is what it is. So, And they're draining it out of the life form, and that's why they're blowing up the reactors, because Barrett believes that it's destroying the planet, which essentially it is. But the Shinra company just doesn't give a shit. They're just, they want to do it because they're all about the greed, the power, and the money, so. basically what they're arguing about now is like Barrett is pretty much explaining to you what I just explained to you and Cloud he doesn't doesn't really seem to care which I don't understand why like uh but Barrett really cares about it and Cloud's just like well why don't they just move up top and it's like because they don't and Barrett's like they don't have the money to do that but once again, I always thought that was really cool. Like, once again, you see the darkness and, like, the slums and, like, how down it is. Now, when they get off the train, I don't do it, but you can go to the right here, and this would take you to a different part of the game that you access later on. Like, you'll probably see it maybe part three or four, but you come out through that way and you come back to this train. But I don't, I don't do it, and I should have done it, but I don't. And you can actually, I think you can level up in there too, because like I think the enemies are stronger. But I shouldn't, I should have did it, but I didn't. So here we see uh, Tifa's bar, which we're about to meet her. And um, I do, I think I checked to see if I could buy my equipment now, but she can't. So that's kind of what I do here and just run around. It has a point. Yeah, we're closed. Come back tomorrow. 
Which I, I don't I don't understand why. I guess they really wanted you to get right into the story. Okay, that's that's Marlene. And um the one comforting Marlene is uh Tifa Lockhart. Uh She's got some pretty big tits. That's all I gotta say. I mean, they're gigantic. Like, so much so that it's almost to the point of being ridiculous. But, you know, I ain't hating on it. I. Yeah, okay, this is where that whole flower thing comes in with, uh, with Aerith. Like, she's asking, like, oh, yo, you found a flower, and you can give it to either Tifa or Marlene. And I give it to Tifa. I don't, I always do. I've never really seen what happens when you give it to Marlene. Which you'd think I would after playing it this many times, but I just don't feel like giving it to Marlene. So Marlene is Barrett's daughter. And I'm not really sure the relationship between Tifa and Barrett. I, th I think they're just friends. I did this for fun. I don't know why I did it. I was just, I think you can just go straight downstairs. You don't even have to talk to Tifa, but I did. Random fun fact, this was the very first um, Final Fantasy to retain its actual numeral, uno, un, I can't say the fucking word, numeral, I'm not even going to try, you know what I'm talking about, the Roman numeral, there we go, uh, the actual, it, it's Roman numeral, because all the other Final Fantasies released in the US were always like retitled, like 4 became 2 and 6 became 3, so this was the first one for that. There's, there's really nothing to talk about here. Like, if you're watching this, the text is going slow enough to read because I, I, most people, when they play the game, they would just mash it so the audience couldn't read it. But I felt doing this game that if you're going to watch it, it would you should just watch it to actually appreciate the game for what it is. Because this game, it's, it's iconic. It, you can't deny it. like you can either like it or hate it but you can't deny that it did pretty much put PlayStation on the map and it's an awesome game and I really feel like if you're watching this you shouldn't just be watching it to listen to me talk because I, I couldn't do it I couldn't talk for like 70 hours of this game and there's just not enough to talk about 
so that's why I'm trying not to talk as much. So, just, like, I know it's hard to read, especially in, like, wanting to read a game, but it's really worth it, and the story is really good, and I would recommend doing it, but if you don't, once, like, every segment, I'll recap it. Another randomly interesting fact, uh, this game is considered by, it, it Final Fantasy VII is the best selling Final Fantasy game of all time, like it sold 10.5 million copies, and I, re I don't know if they'll ever sell a Final Fantasy game as high as that, but they might, who knows. I remember there was something Square said that they would remake 7 if they sold more copies than that one, or if they had one that was a bigger hit than, than 7, which I, I don't think it's going to happen. Like, I think 7 happened right when it needed to happen. Like, today, there's so many games. The market is just, there's so many things everywhere. There's so many different types of games. Like, it's impossible to just hit that one market and having so many people at one time just be like, oh my god, I love this game, I have to buy it. But it's not impossible, because, I mean, Call of Duty does it. They sell, like, I don't know, even billions of gale, millions of copies all the time. So it's not impossible to do it, but they'd have to make a really good game, better than 7. And I'm not even really sure 7 is my favorite game. Like, I like 9 a lot. And I was it was actually a close debate between doing 7 or 9. I did 7 because I know 7 better, and uh, let's face it, nobody wants to watch you get stuck in an RPG, because let's face it, you gotta grind and you get stuck, that's just, just disaster. For some reason I felt the need to talk to Marlene before leaving. Okay, so if you read all that, Listening to me right now is going to be extremely annoying. So basically what happened is they fought about money. After they fought about mon money, Cloud went upstairs. Tifa reminded him. She's like, can you please help us? And he's like, I don't really want to. And she's like, could you, don't you remember your promise? And that's what that whole flashback thing was, her, him promising her. And then it comes back. Barrett gets over it. Tifa leaves Marlene in charge of a bar. And you head out the door. I kind of went a little overboard in this buying shit, though. I'm not going to lie. When I bought all these and I like, I checked my inventory to equip it, I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have bought 10 of these. And I'm pretty sure when you watch the next playthrough, I won't have 10 of these because I'll get rid of them. Or if there's no way to get rid of them, I'll still have them and get rid of them at the first store because 10 of them is a little excessive. But... This is what I was talking about in the beginning. Like, you see, right now I'm equipping them all with the different types of materia, which 
is essentially the magic. So like all Final Fantasies, they use different things to associate magic or spells with. And this time they chose Materia, which every Final Fantasy after that, I'm like, man, I like I always think, oh man, is it Materia, is it Materia? But it's never Materia because it couldn't be because Materia is for Final Fantasy VII. They like doing that, they like reinventing the wheel over and over. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But um, yeah. So the materia itself levels up. So when you master a certain materia, it um you can just switch it to whoever you want and the materia gets stronger and then you can just different characters learn all the spells. Which I was saying before in the very beginning that your characters, it doesn't really matter who you play with then. It's just pretty much your favorite characters you play with. I'm still buying equipment and equipping materia. Which at this point, I'm pretty sure it's at the point where everybody can heal, everybody can do fire, magic, fire, lightning, and ice. But I'm not sure. Some people don't, some people can. Like Tifa can't. I think she has like ice and I think cure. For some reason, I don't know, I always use the girls as the mages in this game. Like they're always, they always hold magic. Not to say that the other people don't, I just, I, like, I know Aerith, I always use her as, like, the healer. I just don't, like, and that in her combat skills, like, her sword fighting and stuff like that, there is kind of a difference there. Like, she's never going to hit as high as Cloud or Barrett does. I've never really explored these areas over here. Most of the time I just run out of here and run back to the main mission. But it's kind of hard to manage time management because in your head you know how much you have to do and like where you're going. But you're trying to keep it within an hour time frame. So like I kind of like just kind of messed around a little bit here. Showing you like the areas that you can view in this little mini town area. Even though they're all pretty much tutorials and useless. running back in here because I, I saw that there's this material on the ground which isn't all materia which I guess I'm kind of glad I went back for it because it was something different but and then an ether it's not till later in the game where you can actually buy ether which is actually really useful especially now because I have like infinity money so that you'll never run out of magic but for some reason they do that in a lot of Final Fantasies you can't buy ether until later into the game which, I'm pretty sure they do that for difficulty reasons, but I don't know. That room was just useless. You just walk in the door, he says, ho, and falls asleep. Oh, that time I realized there was somebody on this side. I was like, because I was looking for somebody to sell me weapons. But then I realized later on, after I looked it up, that nobody in this entire town actually sells you weapons. So it was kind of useless. And then uh, I saw that lady run into the door. And I'm like, maybe she's got something useful. And she's just useless. If you're really interested in playing this game, they, um, uh, people have modded it, so they, like, redid the character skin, so Cloud kind of looks like how he does in, um, like, the battles, like, in the overworld. Like, they kind of, like, updated the graphics a little bit that way, but it's only on the PC, and it's kind of a bitch to get to run. But if you look at this game, you're like, I could play it, but not if it looked this shitty, then I would advise you to just go try that but if you can't get it to run maybe who knows in the future square will release it as a remake but even if they did they'd probably ruin it so
So where they're headed now is they're going to go destroy another Mako reactor. Um, that's kind of why Tifa came along this time. Although Cloud does question her. He's like, why did you even bother to come along later on? But I think the developers were like, it's time to have the three people combat. Yeah, this is funny. Tifa wants to show you the railroad map that Jesse already showed you. And she kind of gets like this little attitude when she finds out you've already seen it. And Cloud's just like, Wh whatever. So what you got to do here is you, you have so many seconds to make it from cart to cart. And I couldn't remember if you get a game over or not, if they do, or you just fight somebody, which I'm pretty sure you just get a game over or the train gets arrested or something. I don't know. I should have did it, but I didn't want to do it because I haven't saved the game yet. So I couldn't tell you what happens if you don't make it, but I do make it. So it's kind of a plus. Yeah, that, that guy like stole my money, but then I was like, wait a minute, I have like 9 billion gold. I mean, 9 billion gil, I don't need it. I, I didn't realize though that they were done talking. So I was standing back there and I was like, wait, I can move now. I didn't I didn't realize that until I was doing it. That's why there's that weird pause. You'll see after this, like, those weird people that keep turning back and forth, the dude with the mustache and the top hat, he, like, they look at you weird, but then they do, like, this weird salute thing. But, hold on, wait. No, I got it. The reason they did that was because it's Big Jesse and Wedge. And the only reason I know that is because before doing this, I looked up to see if Jesse was a girl or a guy, and they showed those little character models there like for Biggs and Wetch and that's when I realized wait a minute I've seen those before and then it made the connection between those so I learned something new as you guys are watching this but it was always striking like I was like why do they keep doing that and now it makes sense because they were trying to conceal their identity so what you see now is basically how the character battles will be from now on there might be one or two points in the rest of the game when you get like a party of one. But for the most part, it's always going to be a party of three. And the combat gets really interesting as it goes on. Like they do add strategy and you can die. Like it's not like an easy Final Fantasy game where it's just like, oh, this game is so dirt easy. Anybody can beat it. Like anybody can beat it if they put the time into it. But like the text box is like cut off there. That's that's not me editing. That's really how it is on the screen. I don't know why it's like that. 
and I apologize ahead of time for the random babbling. I'm, tr I'm trying to cut it down, but it's, it's really hard. I'm just trying to explain how I'm doing this. You gotta love how like I move like like less than a pixel right and get into a battle. Another thing we haven't really talked about yet is, is the music. Like, I really like the music in this game, especially towards the end. It just starts getting really intense and crazy sounding, but he did a fantastic job on the music in this one. Matter of fact, there's not very many Final Fantasies that don't have really good music. debating like I was gonna go up that ladder and then I saw um wedge over here and I was like uh, I want to go over there because most of the time they always place people where you always got to go and sometimes they place them in random positions but up here I realized that it technically didn't even matter which way I went Most of these battles, I don't remember what the characters, what the characters' enemies are weak against. So you'll see me like choosing ice, fire, and bolt, and I'll try them in different ones. And then I just, I look to see which one does the most damage. Most of the time, it's bolt, and unfortunately, cloud is the only one with bolt. I think I bought more bolt, but I just didn't equip it to anybody. Maybe I'll do that like part two of this whole thing. I'll, I'll equip them and then. I'll put it on them and then you can see if it's any different or not. See right there, it was... Right there I'm realizing, wait, that's the same ladder I wanted to go up in the beginning. I could have just went the other way. And I'm like, wait, okay, so there's only one way left to go, so I just run down this way. So this is going to be the last room that you see in this um, Let's Play. Like I said before, I don't know when I'll get part two done. Because it's crazy. You, you got to record it, then you got to do all this stuff. Not complaining, but right now I'm running back and forth just to get in a, one more battle. So, you know, try to get my experience up. So, yeah, this is the last battle of this one. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to continue to do commentary throughout the entire episode. I might do just little bits and pieces here and there. Like, I, I know I'll definitely do, like, a little intro piece and maybe a little outro piece talking about it, recapping what happened in case you're just watching it because you just like the way it looks or you didn't feel like reading it. I, I don't know. I don't know why you'd watch this if you didn't. Maybe you knew the story and you wanted to hear me talk, but I doubt that's the case. But who knows? I mean, you can comment down below if you really like hearing me talk, and I'll consider doing it again. But right now, watching me do another hour of this, is, it's crazy.
But yeah, I, I really would appreciate it. Like if for if you have any comments, questions, if I said something wrong that you know something about that I said that I didn't know, that would be really interesting. Just put it in the comment section. I want to know about it. I want to hear about it. I love this game. And I'd love to hear from people who love it too. So, if you could, like this video, post some comments down below, like us on Facebook. All the information that you could possibly need is in the description. And I'll see you next time. Here. They set up here. Like, you can really feel like how dark, down, and depressing the city of Midgar really is. So, to give you a little information on what's about to happen, we're going to meet Cloud Strife, the main protagonist, who's working as a mercenary for hire, helping an eco-terrorist group called Avalanche, and they're going to destroy the Mako reactors that's surrounding the city of Midgar. Awesome transition from cutscene to gameplay. Here we see Biggs, Jesse, Wedge, and Barrett. And finally, Cloud jumps like a baller off the top of the train. Then the game's finally gonna give me control, and we're gonna get into this. So, this is kind of how combat works in Final Fantasy VII. This is definitely not the last time you're going to see it, but, um, yeah. So, it's called the Active Time Battle, and it's been this way since, I think, Final Fantasy IV. But, um, basically, you just take turns hitting your opponent. It's their strategy somewhat. Not so much in the beginning of the game as there is later in the game, but they do their poses, then you get your experience, your money, which is called Gil, that you used to buy like your materia and your equipment and all that other stuff. Uh, this is when they finally let you actually create your name. At the end of this, I kind of started getting it. So you shouldn't see it anymore after this playthrough. Another thing, like this game, it's like it, it uses all pre rendered backgrounds, like Resident Evil. So the directions that you use to move around in are kind of weird sometimes. And it, it's really hard to explain unless you've actually played the game. But if you haven't played the game, I don't know why you wouldn't. This game is totally awesome. It's, it's a pretty awesome game, and I can't really tell if it's just all nostalgia or not, but I played this game so many times over. It's really awesome. So down here, I'm gonna save the game, but I'm also doing, it's gonna look weird because I save the game, but then like it, it, it freezes. I'll show it to you. And there's a reason for this actually. Like here I messed up. I meant to go down to save and I went up to items, but. So you'll see here that I have slot one has nine billion gold or whatever the hell it is. And I figured if I was gonna do this, I want to cut back into as much grinding as possible, so here I reset the game, which is why it freezes and there's this weird jitter thing, but yeah, and I, and I reloaded it, so now I have the 9,999 gold, so I want to cut back on as much grinding as possible, but I'm pretty sure I'm still going to have to grind levels, even when you guys aren't watching me play it. Which, I mean, isn't necessarily a bad thing. I, I don't really mind grinding in RPGs. I don't really mind grinding in any video game, actually.
Hello, and welcome to part one of my Let's Play on Final Fantasy VII for the Sony PlayStation. I do plan on playing this game in its entirety, which can take anywhere from 20 to 70 hours. Each one of these videos will be about an hour in length, but some might be longer or shorter. The release schedule for these videos is really whenever I get them done, because unlike other Let's Plays on my YouTube channel this time, I'm choosing to record the commentary after I play the game, not while. Reason is, I really wanted to filter what's being said and make it as interesting as possible. So as far as commentary goes, I'll explain the story, give you some interesting facts, and my personal experiences. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy Final Fantasy VII. So this game was released September 7th, 1997 by Squaresoft, making me about nine years old at the time. I had never played a Final Fantasy game before this, and honestly, I can't tell you how I had even known about the game, but I'm assuming it had to have been either from television commercials or magazine ads, because apparently at the time, Sony issued a $100 million ad campaign for this game, which is crazy. But after I did hear about the game, I was so hyped for it to come out. I had to have everything Final Fantasy VII. I still can remember looking in the back of a magazine and seeing those Final Fantasy VII Extra Night action figures advertised and asking my parents to get them for me that Christmas. This is Aerith Gainsborough. She's a 22-year-old flower girl from the slums of Midgar. I really don't know what she's supposed to be doing in this back alley. Some people say she might have been praying. I really don't know. And actually, I didn't question it until this playthrough. I really like the look and the feel, the atmosphere. Funny thing, like I didn't know Jessie was actually a girl until I looked it up recently because like, from the model that they use, it could be a girl or a guy. But then when I go back and like, I just, most of the time I just always skip the cutscenes. So, uh, or even like the talking scenes. So like, I never really read all the stuff that she said, but now I'm like, you know, I guess it would be kind of weird if a dude was saying all oh, that's a cloud, but yeah. And another thing, like, I was trying to, like, I was reading the text as I was playing the game because I hadn't played this game in a while, so I figured if I'm going to play it, why not record it so then, you know, other people can see me play it. So, like, you can still kind of read the text along with me. So you can understand the game like I'm playing it. So that's why, like, I'll recap it, like I was saying before, like, later on. So then, like, if you're not reading this and you're just watching me play it, then you'll still know what's happening. Another thing that was weird, like I hadn't played this in so long. I like I think X or O is to run. I can't remember, but one of them, like I kept switching them, so like you'll see me like kind of stutter like after the it stops and it starts, and that's just because I couldn't remember which button was run, so I would just be holding the wrong button and he'd be walking, and it was just it was extremely irritating. But by the end, I was kind of lost here. I kept hitting default, and then I realized you gotta hit select, so I was like, okay, that's why there was that weird me going around. And then you get to pick Barrett, and now I realize she hit select instead of not default, which I don't know why I thought it was default. It was weird. But here's another transition between game and cinematic again, which is they do that a lot in this game, and I think it really, it's, it adds a certain flavor to the game, I guess. 
I definitely had never seen it in a game before this. I was trying really hard to make that door without getting into a battle. But, um... As for the battles, like, you can equip different, um, materia, which is, like, you equip them to the weapons and your different, like, accessories, which I'll probably get into later as the playthroughs go on, because, let's face it, there's probably going to be about 70 episodes of this, so I don't want to talk about it all right off the bat, but you, you equip certain materia, which gives you your spells, and since you can equip whatever materia to any person there's really no difference between who's in your party and who isn't, which is kind of different because it was never really like that in other Final Fantasy games. So, but I mean, it kind of lends you to if you wanted to play with somebody and you couldn't play with them because in other Final Fantasies, they were just the healer and you didn't need the healer or they were a warrior and you needed a healer. Now you don't have to deal with that because you can just play with, with whoever you wanted. We have Barrett yelling at us again, just... Now he's, he joins you, and now Barrett's in your party, which... Barrett's pretty cool. 